adventurers and friends, welcome to the MinMax Podcast as we conclude the fall of Plaguestone. We want to thank each and every one of you for joining us on this adventure. More have done so than we would have expected, and it is very appreciated. A special thanks to everyone who has interacted with us through social media, Twitter, our Discord. We love hearing from you, and anybody else who would like to join our little community, please feel free to do so. You can find us just about anywhere by searching MinMaxed, M-N-M-A-X-E-D. Now, while this episode does mark the finale of the fall of Plaguestone, fear not, for our adventures together are far from over. Adventures such as All on the Table, our more explanatory, single-shot style of episode where we take a deeper dive into the rules and mechanics of the Pathfinder 2nd Edition system. And from there, in just a few weeks' time, we will be launching into the Extinction Curse, Paizo's second full-length adventure path for Pathfinder 2nd Edition, a full-fledged 1-20 adventure that we are going to be sharing with you and that we hope you choose to share with us. It is going to be epic. We will definitely be bringing you more information about that in the coming weeks, so stay tuned to our social media pages. For now, let us settle in one last time with Daru, Plum, Varnak, and Vorn for the conclusion of The Fall of Blakestone. A recap of Session 22. As we continue, we find a cave with a big bat and a swarm. Turns out swarms are kind of bitches in Pathfinder 2nd Edition, and we take them out. We heal up and continue into the final chamber. Within, we find Vilri. Plum tries to talk her down, but she pretty much is like, nah, fuck everyone, and combat ensues. Immediately, she predictably calls on a horrendous alchemical monstrosity. By the grace of Desna, we put down the monstrosity pretty quickly. Vilri is tougher, but the dice are in our favor, and the BBEG is destroyed. However, she reveals there's some drudge thing heading to Etrin's Folly. This is not yet over. No, she did send a drudge. She said that she sent it to Plaguestown and that she couldn't recall it. It's too late. Well, that sounds like we need to get on our horses and go, if only we had horses. Yeah, if only you had horses. You have a couple of different options here. There is the hole in the ceiling of the cave that is letting in a column of light. You could probably reasonably assume that that is where that that leads to outside. Did we loot her? Should we check her quick? Just see if she has anything important on her? I believe we should loot her in case there's something important that might help us with this drudge monstrosity. She has a dagger, that crossbow that she was holding, that uh, she was loading alchemical bombs into and then shooting bolts from. She's wearing some bracers. I put them on. Or check all those shit for magic. Let's say we don't have time to, to identify all this stuff. Well, that's the question. If you do detect magic, you notice that the dagger is magic, the crossbow is not, the bracers are, and that's it. Equip it. I'm, I'm just going to assume they're braces of armor, and I'm going to throw them on as we head on out. Okay. But I think I'm the only one here that would use them. I hope they fucking kill you. The squad encounters <laughs> their first cursed item. Yes. <laughs> Tyler, find a cursed item quick. Oh, uh, I, could, I could come up with that right now. Bracers of uh, Carpal Tunnel. They make it so a spellcaster can't move their fingers well enough to cast a spell. You, you, can't, you, have, to, you have to pass a, a DC 5 flat check to <laughs> cast a spell. Cast there somatic spells. <laughs> yep. I like that. I like that very much. No, no, nothing like that. Uh, she was wearing them and was gaining benefit from them. I was talking with some people in the Pathfinder 2E subreddit Discord. That was a mouthful about how important magic items are for the power of characters. And I'm assuming that also, you know, is going to mean something like this. Villery was basically a uh, just an alchemist. Yeah. And uh, these bracers, I'm just going to I'm just going to give it to you because otherwise when are you going to use it? I like it when you give it to me, Tyler. I know. I know you do. These are uh, bracers of missile deflection. Oh. Yeah, the, the only other thing on her, on Vilri, that would be of any consequence, a silver key. Well, I pick up that shit. Well, we'll grab that. Obviously. Interesting. Boring. You want to check out this, uh, is there, is there an actual liquid in her cauldron? Yes. We should check that out before we leave, too. Or just dump it out. Crafting check? Yeah, it would be a crafting check. I can't roll crafting checks to save my life ever. Uh, roll a five, get an eleven. Ouch! You have no idea what's in here. 
It's purple. Yeah, I never know what the fuck they are. <coughs> you, you know, Ted. Um, it makes it really hard to learn stuff about these alchemists when, we, <laughs> when you fail every check. <laughs> I say we just dump it out because it's probably horrible. No oh yes, yeah, so let's let's dump it out in the river. That sounds real good. <laughs> Not in the river, just yeah. I'd probably get to the river, wouldn't it? <laughs> then look, it would, it would probably it. get to the river. We'll just leave it here. We just, you know, just leave it. Uh, good thing Vorn really only cares about air quality. He might have been all over your shit about that. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me how you guys want to approach this. I mean, I think we just need to get back to Plaguestone before shit goes down. So, I'm gonna miss. Did you say there was like an exit out of this room, or just back the way we came, or? Yeah, so three ways out. Hole in the ceiling, potential river, escape, going backwards, basically just the way you came. I want to take the hole. I want to, I want to get out through the roof. I think that sounds like fun. All right, how do we do and, that? Uh, how high up did you say it was? If you want to go through and climb through the uh, ceiling, it's rocky cave wall, and it's not you know slippery. It's about 20 feet up. Uh, I mean, I think I can climb. I think I can climb up there. I don't weigh much. If someone with a good athletics, i.e. probably Daru or I, climb up and drop a rope down. I prefer that. I have a minus two in athletics. Let's do that. All right. So then if I understand Daru, you're climbing up first? Hell. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. You've been super self-conscious about saying hell yeah since I mentioned it, haven't you? Oh, uh, natural 20 <laughs> for the day? Holy <laughs> shit, yeah. Nat 20. People right, are going to yeah. start thinking I'm a cheater. <laughs> Daru's goddamn Spider-Man. I'm telling you what, dude. You've been having some ridiculous luck. Okay, so we're shooting for a climb here. Daru rolls a nat 20 for a total of 31, was it? Uh, 31. Okay, so Daru, I'm just... I'm going to be up front with you guys here. I've not seen any other climb uh, section. Everything just seems to be based on actions in encounter mode. So since we're in exploration mode and you rolled a nat 20, you easily and safely make it up the incline and you uh, poke your head up into uh, what's now noon in the mountains and you've got maybe maybe a 50 feet down to the ground level. Uh, I suppose this would be where we look for tracks or signs of something going through here. Well, the rest of us got to make it up there first. Is there a way there. out up there? Uh-uh. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I dropped the rope to my <laughs> my fellow comrades here. In really toying with that anti-redeemer here towards the yep. end of Fall of Plague Stone, huh? I leave them. <laughs> <laughs> Die, friends! He goes and helps the drudge. He kills everyone in Plague Stone, Anakin Skywalker style. <laughs> so, except the except the old man, with I whom he goes on evil adventures. Who it, it that's turns the, out that's the first person I kill. <laughs> tur- turns out he was the emperor the entire time. <laughs> I don't know if Vorn would even care if I, I left you down you. there. No, if you went and murdered everybody, <laughs> <laughs> probably grab a couple bottles of uh, turnip juice. So Daru. Uh, tosses a rope down to everybody. I will attempt to climb this rope to leave this place. Athletics check. Yes, please. You want me to modify it because of the rope, or are you going to do that? I'm going to do that myself. I get a 17 on my climb check, so I'm assuming I make it up. 17 does make it up. Four, you you gonna sit down and I was going to say, y'all going to sit down there and stare up at him? I'll catch you if you fall. <laughs> I'll try to climb. Vaughn, don't roll a crafting check. Roll a climb check. Were they afraid to? I know. <laughs> <laughs> what was the DC, Tyler? Can you tell us the DC again? Uh, five. Hey, Ted, what'd you get? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a four, everyone. Well, the six got a four. Well, that's what happens when you're untrained in something. Apparently, Swanee, no, they can't climb ropes when they're not trained in athletics. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you haven't gotten that far up, and... To be honest with you, roll higher than a six, right? How much does Vorn weigh? Yeah, what if he just like holds onto the rope and we pull him up? Well, then that's just fine. Hold onto the rope. He'll be fine, I would imagine. And by we, I mean Daru. <laughs> yeah. Daru, pull me up. <laughs> pull time. Daru pulls. You don't need to roll for this, bud. You're strong. You got this. Probably have the bulk to spare, too. Am I strong enough oh. to hold onto the rope? <laughs> <laughs> Tie it to you. I, thought, I was gonna say tie to you. I think I think you guys will find a way. I hold on to the back of the rope and uh, 
and give Daru words of encouragement and pretend like I'm helping. <laughs> and what would the, what might those sound like, David? <laughs> okay, Daru, let's do this now. Here we go. Heave ho, heave ho. And then I'm just standing there because he's like not looking. It. Which is silly because I'm a sailor and you'd think I'd be good with ropes, but um, we'll just say I do the dexterous parts of sailing. Whatever well, tying means. a rope and pulling a rope are two drastically different things. That's true. That's a fair point. Mm-hmm. Well, I would say after a little bit of time here, it's going to take you guys about five to ten minutes to get up here. It's a gentle slope down to, to uh, forest floor level. Okay. So, no, you don't need to roll climb checks to get down it. Fantastic. But once but from down, the vantage point, can we see anything? Yeah, give me a perception check. Uh, 25. Okay. With well, the 25, uh, you can definitely tell uh, that something came through here recently, um, but you don't really know where it may have, might have gone. We're going to find out a handful of things, and this is going to be a little bit of rules lookup, how fast you guys go in exploration mode normally at normal speed. David, give me that ring. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do. He's, he's not wrong, because when you're tracking, you move at half speed. Uh, let me pull up that ring here. Ring of the Weary Traveler. You get a 10-foot item bonus to your speed, but only when determining your overland movement per hour. But that is what we are doing. So you gain 10 feet while you are tracking. That is fantastic. That's a, that is actually makes that ring really good in this circumstance. Yes, Aren't it we does. glad that we got all six of them from Temley now? <laughs> Temley, we need all six. <laughs> we need all six of them. Well, who is the slowest right now? Well, it's going to be the tracker. And moving at how f how fast? Well, I can move at 15 with the ring. Miles per day at 15 feet, 12. You guys remember how many miles it is to get back to Plaguestone? No. 20. So this is going to take us two days. We can't take that long. Then if we go 30, well, we can't go 30. We could go 25. We could be there in... One day. It's 20 miles per day. So we could get there by whatever, midnight or whatever it is. Unless you want to carry me, then maybe we could go 30. Does everybody else go 25, I assume? I go 25. Daru, what's your speed? 30. Okay. So, yeah, we're going to have to go 25. Um, we could just get to Plague Stone and yeah, hope I mean, we Essentially, beat the we drudge. just have to run. Are there like, rules for like moving faster? Yes, there are. There's an exploration activity called Hustle. Hustle. So, 20 miles per day. That's how. That's the traveling speed for 25. Yes. If you're hustling, theoretically, that would be 40 miles per day, right? If you can hustle moving, the whole time. But you, you can't hustle, the whole, hustle the whole time based on what I've laid out, right? So, right. that means you're hustling at half of the time. So, if, if you're traveling... As fast as you can, you go you go 20 miles per day half the time and 40 miles per day the other half of the time. That's 30 miles. It's 30 miles. It's just straight splits the middle? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay. if, it, if it's half the time, it would be 50% uh, higher. Yeah. It doesn't seem to call out for me here that, it, that a day's worth of travel is eight hours either. Yeah, I'm not seeing what kind of time that takes. But, yeah. I, but it says like miles per hour is two and a half. I think 2.5 times 8 is 20. Yeah, oh, is. that's a good call. Oh, good I guess, call. yeah, we could just figure that out. So, so maybe that's hours. a better way to look at it. 5 miles an hour or 2.5 miles an hour. So we would be basically going 3 miles an hour overall to get to Plaguestone, correct? Uh, should be going 3.75 miles per hour. Okay, well, let's get specific. I like that. So if we're going 3.75 miles per hour, and it's 20 miles to get there. That is 5 and one third hours. So, if you guys left now, it's noon, you'd get there roughly 5.15 if you just straight up hustled back to Etrin's Folly. I mean, I guess if our goal is to beat it there, we wouldn't need to track it. We would just need to get the fuck to Etrin's Folly. Exactly. You also haven't found its... Have you made a survival check yet? Not yet. So you haven't actually attempted to find its trail either? No, but we certainly can. It's not a great roll, but an 18 to find its tracks. You started off where the drudge exited the cave. So it's actually a little easier to find the trail because you started where it started. It has big plotting steps, and it's actually really easy to see this thing's trail now that you've found it. You think that you might be able to hustle and track it simultaneously. It's okay. so easy to track. 
we're we're following Godzilla through the brush the bushes. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't say like Godzilla. Let's just say a really clumsy Sam Squanch. How about we're we're how... following an ogre through the bushes. <laughs> how about a clumsy, a, giant, a, a clumsy, tireless nine-year-old kid? I want to get on a treadmill now. And I want to see what it's like to walk at three point seven five miles an hour. Because that doesn't seem that fast. It's not to me. that fast at all. But it's over really 20 not. Miles, That's like a jog. But for twenty miles, it's a, quite a long time. Carrying what? How much? How many pounds of shit? Uh, I'm carrying virtually nothing. Well, we're not talking about you. You suck at this, anyways. I've got bracers now. <laughs> oh, that's right. That does nothing. It wouldn't I mean, be bad I'd for a little while, exhausted. but for twenty, for eight yeah. hours, you'd be fucking exhausted. I was gonna say, yeah, but for, be for eight hours, for five and a quarter hours, yeah, for sure that. But also keep in mind, we're dealing with a halfling, a human wearing po like ten. How many? Like maybe how many pounds of armor do you think chainmail is? Like twenty? Yeah, I will say David with his fucked up foot definitely could not do this. <laughs> You're not made for walking, David. Did you see Segway put out an adult stroller? Oh my god. You should I look at it. I love to walk, though. I love walking. Just not for eight hours. Just not for eight hours, or even five and a quarter hours. <laughs> so, it sounds like you guys are just hustling straight there. I think we've got our numbers. I'm satisfied within rules as written what we've come up to. It's going to take about five hours and fifteen minutes for you to get to Etron's Folly if you just hustle. If we're being specific, five hours and twenty minutes. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay, let's do this. It's fucking slutty. I see you smirking over there. <laughs> I, mean, five, I mean, one third of 60 minutes is 20 minutes. You're right. Of course. Of course you are. I just wasn't thinking about it that hard. <laughs> Neither did I. <laughs> oh, that just shows the difference between your brain and mine. You guys are hustling back to Etron's Folly. You're following the big plodding footsteps of the drudge. It's relatively easy to follow that trail, as I had previously mentioned. You know that you're getting close to Etrigan's Folly. And as you're getting closer, there's still a grim possibility that the town of Etrigan's Folly is now just a town filled with the dead and dying. You're not entirely certain when Vilri released the drudge. But as That's miles cool. pass, minutes turn to hours, and finally the unsuspecting village grows closer. There is no sign of Vilri's minion, but that only adds to a growing sense of dread. Etran's Folly comes into view at the crest of a hill. The alchemical drudge you see is now approaching its final destination, the Plague Stone, where it will carry out its final gruesome command. What's that? You guys haven't really figured that out at all. We, we, we need to get her mother's ring away from it. I'm assuming it's got it. Maybe it's just there to, like, bring more turnips? Give the townsfolks hugs? Yeah. I like hugs and turnips. Are they growing you, on you, you Vorn? You, the turnips? You, Vorn has never had an issue with them. Everyone else is bitching. That's true. Like, that's true. Oh, Vorn oh, has been... Food. It's the miracle Vorn has been fruit. drinking the shit vegetable. out of this stuff. It's a vegetable? <laughs> it's a vegetable. Oh, that's, that's a, a good vegetable. point. So, you guys do, in fact, see the drudge plotting towards the, the Plague Stone. You remember when I say the Plague Stone, you know what I'm talking about, right? That low, circular stone formation yes. in the middle of town? Its starting position and distance to the stone depends on the choices the PCs made. If they didn't stop for breaks, the PCs are all fatigued. That seems fair. But they can square off against the drudge while it is still at the edge of town, 120 feet away from the stone. That's when we catch up with it. Yeah, you would catch up with it when it's 120 feet away from the stone. So as you guys catch up to the drudge, you're about 20 feet away from it. It's at the edge of town. You guys are by the old orchard right now. I am going to have us just go into initiative here. Uh, so everybody go ahead and give me an initiative roll. Daru gets a 20. 22 for Varnak. 19 for Plum. Uh, 18 for Vorn. All right. Varnak, I'm going to have you go first. You rolled a 22 in initiative. What do you do? So can I see the ring? Uh, no. No? There is no, no ring? Uh, no. Not that you can see. But I wanted to use the steal action. Oh. If you use the seek action, you might be able to find where the drudge is storing the ring. Uh, so seek is a basic action, right? Correct. So if you moved up to it, seeked, or used the seek action, 
And if you do see where the ring is, you could use the steal action from there. That sounds like fun. Let's do it. All right. We haven't used the steal action yet, so that's fantastic. We haven't really used seek either. Okay, so it looks like it is a single perception check. Do, do you want a secret or, I mean, I guess either I'm going to find it or not. So You're going to find it or you don't. <laughs> Roll your dice. It's fine. I don't need it to be secret. Uh, that's only a 16. 16? You don't find it. Only because normally you would be looking, like, you know, on its fingers or maybe, you know, glinting in the opening of a belt pouch. Uh, but you, nothing like that. This thing is very amorphous, and it's not visible. Good word. I love that word. Amorphous? Amorphous. Good word. It's a fun word to say. Can I seek again and just spend two actions looking for it? I don't see why you couldn't. Go ahead. I get a 27 this time. Nice. You do see it. I'm like looking like around its neck or something. Like maybe yeah, you hung it, it on a, like a chain or something. Don't uh, lose this. <laughs> Oh yeah, don't don't drop it. Uh, it's not on a chain or anything. You do see it, but it seems to be like you see like a little band of silver protruding just a little bit from the, its quote skin on the shoulder. So you think it's actually like being stored inside of its body, and it's gonna have to like pull it out. I love monsters where you have to say quote skin. <laughs> There's a lot of them, David. There are. Does it seem to acknowledge that I've moved up next to it? Not at all. I will call back to the guys then and say, I think it's a silver band on its shoulder. All right. Then after Varnak, it's Daru. All right. So we got to close some ground, eh? You have been closing ground. Yeah, I see that. Can I get behind him without any uh, issues here? Yeah, he doesn't, uh, you don't provoke any attacks of opportunity from it or anything like that. How's it react once it's cornered like this? It is completely ignoring you, and All it's right. on a mission. All right, then I'm uh, take out the trusty great club. Well, it's already out, but I'll swing. Give it a, give it a thwack. I'm going to go ahead and say you could not hustle with the great club out, so you're going to have to use an interact action to draw it. What do you mean hustle? I was going my, my movement. No, you were hustling. Everybody was hustling. Our, our exploration action was hustle. Correct. Even and though I only moved my stride. Technically, he never hustled. That's true. He never did. <laughs> but I think, I mean, it doesn't really say it, but I think everybody hustles when any when any one person hustles, but I don't know exactly how that. Boy, that's All rough. Right. Well, if I'm still hustling, then I'm way down here. Well, you're not still hustling. Oh, are you actually going to go way ahead of it? Yeah. Oh, okay. So Daru runs. And then, like, kind of bulks up. <laughs> to go stance. square off? Yep. All right. Listen here, motherfucker. And uh, I'll take my... Well, I guess I can't interact, but I'll take my weapon out next time. It's fine. Okay, sounds good. Then it's Plum. You're up. So just a reminder, fatigue is essentially a minus one penalty to AC and saving throws. Correct. Oh, yes. Everybody is fatigued because they hustled the whole way here and did not rest. Well, I'll let Daru handle getting on the other side of it to intercept. I am just going to uh, launch some spells... I have one first level spell remaining. I guess I'll try it. Why not? Let's try that final remaining first level spells spell. It is hydraulic push. Okay. And I will make a spell attack. I mean, it could be anything, but that's my biggest damage dealer I have left. So that's what we'll use. Okay. Uh, I'm taking that because I'm fatigued. I'm taking a minus one, right? That's Correct. That's the AC and saves. Uh, not the attacks. Good point. Let's double check. Minus one penalty to AC and saving throws. Yep. Yep. Okay, never mind. So this does not affect my attack. Not at all. Fatigued does not affect your attack. <laughs> now, you're shooting it through friendly people. So if it's True. Attack. It has soft cover. Okay, I'll move a little bit. How about, how about like to there? Do I have a clear line of sight on? That's clear. That's a clear line. Yeah. All right. So here's my spell attack. I get a 20 to hit it. 20 does hit. Fantastic. So that will deal him 3d6 damage. I, I don't know if you had an option, but I don't think we want to move it any closer to the flagstone. Than <laughs> yeah. Give it a push, I, David. I deal it 8 damage, and I'll push it 5 feet. <laughs> <laughs> but how about I push it 5 feet? Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Diagonal. You just push it straight from where you were. It goes a little more towards its destination. 
It was all I had. I'm done. It doesn't say you may, it just automatically says, and it moves five feet. That's, I was just thinking that. Let me check that just to make sure. Make sure Good I'm call. not fucking that up. Like everything else? No, like everything <laughs> else. Fucking shots fired. I do not deny that which is true. <laughs> I'm looking at hydraulic push. Make a spell, main, make a range spell attack roll. If it's yeah, success, it's, it's knocked back five feet. Knocked back five oh, feet. Yep. There you go. Sounds pretty automatic there. Yep. It, it really is. That it is thanks my you turn. for getting it closer to its destination. <laughs> and, and moving it out of Daru's way. <laughs> I'm really just tired of, of Plague Stone. That's really it. I'm just trying to hurry this along. Burn, burn this town. Just, to... <laughs> All right. So then after Plum, it's Vorn Storm. Uh, Vorn will move a little closer with his first action. And second and third, he will. What a fuck spells. Um, I'll produce flame at it, I guess. Okay. Roll the 17, got a 26 total. 26 hits. Nice. And that is two twos, so eight damage. Eight, eight damage. It's a little ball of flyer. <laughs> Sizzles and bubbles some of the drudges, clay, ooze like skin. All right, then after Vorn, it is the Drudge's turn. The Drudge spends all three of its actions to move closer towards the Plague Stone. That means it moves 60 feet closer. I fucked up on my turn. I should have just tripped him. (laughs) Currently, the Drudge is 60 feet away from the Plague Stone. And we're going to go back to the top with Varnak. It's your turn. I literally cannot catch it anymore. So I'll quick draw my bow and fire. I've got, no, I mean, there's nothing else I can do. Quick draw your bow and fire. All right. Is it within your range without the increment? Yeah, it's only 65 feet away, so. Okay. Then go ahead and make your shot. It's going to be a 24. 24 hits. Deadly is just on a crit, right? Correct. Correct. And volley just means that if it's. If it's closer than the volley distance to you, you gain a penalty. You, you take a penalty. You take a penalty. And it's more than that, so. I should be good to just do damage. Yeah, this is really the perfect range for you to hit with a longbow. I do six damage. All right, six damage. That's my first attack. I will attack it again. Which is your second. This is now your second second. action. Uh, That's a 17, because I only get a plus one on that one. My range is really shitty. 17 misses. Damn. Uh, Well, fuck me. I will use action. my last action to just move 20 feet. Moving 20 feet closer to it? Yep. So All it's right. only 40. I mean, it doesn't really matter because it will reach the Plague Stone next turn. So. As you guys are getting closer to town here, people are starting to realize. You see, you see people that you've actually interacted with recently. Uh, you see the caravan guys and Temley. And uh, Delma's not out here, but you see a couple of the the farmers uh, who are here gathering supplies on the lunch hour. No, not the lunch hour. This is five hours. This is five and a half hours. This is 5.30. Yeah, it's dinner time. Everybody's going to the feed mill. Everybody's going to the feed mill for dinner. As people and farmers are on their way there, they're seeing this drudge just lurch and plod towards the plague stone and it's terrifying looking really and they all scream and start running away like i get what's going on here but i feel like it really fucks slow people slow characters <laughs> oh absolutely 100 percent. like i would have no way to do anything if we were all dwarves yeah plague stone would be dead if you were all dwarves yep, we're all dwarves <laughs> plague stone would be gone <laughs> all right then daru it is your turn all right well, I will move my 30 feet up to this creature, and, uh... Is that one action you get there? Sure is. Because you ran ahead of it the first round. Yeah. All right. You know, we'll attempt a trip. Let me just double-check athletics quick here. So it's an athletics check versus its reflex DC. Correct. Or you can grapple it. Nah, that's that's okay. Go for the trip? Yeah. What'd you get? 23. 23 versus his reflex DC, which is a 20. That is a success. Nice. So you trip the drudge, followed by a great club. <laughs> Did I smash? See that attack roll? This is at a minus five. Is it? 
because the trip is, has the attack oh, trait. Oh, yeah. So that's what you do it the other way around, usually. I mean, I should have just done it the other way around. Doesn't really matter either way. Well, you wouldn't take a negative on your trip. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you would, because it has oh. the attack trait. Because trip is an attack trait. Yeah. Correct. So Anything. you would have actually failed. Yeah. All right, 19. Trip. So 19 does hit the drudge. And it is flat-footed, so it has a minus two to AC right now. That's true. Seven damage. Seven damage to the drudge. Daru comes up and just wham, wallops on it with his great club, and pieces of it fall off. Daru, do you have another action, or is that that's all three, isn't it? Yes, sir. All right, Plum Pargeter, you're up. I will move my 25 feet, uh, which gets me within. Uh, so that would get me within 50 feet of it, I guess. Because it was, yeah, it's 10 feet in front of me. It moved 60, so it would be 7 feet. I moved 25. That puts me within 45 feet of it, I guess, right? Yeah. Um, I cast Ray of Frost at it. All right. Uh, that has 120 foot range. It is another spell attack. So here we go. Oh, I only get an 11. I roll a 2. I think I'm going to use my action point on that because I think dealing this thing damage is paramount right now. Hero so I used my, my hero point. And I take another, and I oh. roll a one from a two Ouch. to a one. Ouch, dude. Uh, it wasn't meant to be. Uh, Blake Stone is doomed. I am done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then after Plum, it's Vorn Storm's turn. Uh, Vorn will do the same thing as Plum. Um, I'll move 30 feet clo- or 25 feet closer. Okay. And then Ray of Frost it. All right. Let's see it. Spell attack roll. And just like Plum, I rolled a one. Uh, I'm already here. Goodness gracious. My goodness. Oh, Much better. Well, oh, 19, I got a 28. 28 is a critical hit on the drudge. Uh, with Ray of Frost, critical success, uh, target takes double damage and takes a 10-foot status penalty to its speed for one round. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no nice. Shit. Uh, 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 perfect. Just perfect. perfect. All right, let's see it. W 2d4 plus... Eight. No, more because it's heightened. Um, 44 plus 8. Uh, decent wow. roll. Uh, 19 damage. 18 damage. That was a big hit. Vorn comes from behind. Just poo, poo. This ray of frost hits the drudge and it slows down. You can see it as crystal formations start to move across it and it's moving slower. But it is still up. Well, technically, it's prone. Well, okay, you're right. Which means it's its turn. It's going to fend it, spend its first action standing up, and its second and third actions moving. But since it's taking a 10 foot status penalty to its speed, it can only move 10 feet per action, which means it only gets 20 feet closer to the plague stone. Okay, so that means it's 40 feet away from the plague stone right now. And at this rate, it couldn't even get there. Wait, hold on. That was only for one round. For one round. Okay, never mind. Yeah. Right? One round? Correct. If it gets there uh, next round, it will have one action after it makes it to the Plague Stone. So that's going to bring us back up to the top of the order. It is now Varnak's turn. I will move a single move. Nice. I am 50 feet away from it. I, cannot, I still can't catch it. <laughs> Um, so I will I will shoot at it again. You already have your longbow out from the last round. You have quick draw yes, anyways. I do. We will get a 16. A 16 will not hit. I, I, I have to hero point it. I have no... This is your last action? This is pretty much my last action. I mean, uh, I've you're, got you're two. Just saying... I have, technically I have two, but it will reach it before I can go again. So well, and the I, other I thing need to is, do it on is... my highest attack bonus. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. You might as well use it on where you're not getting the multiple attack penalty. Natural 20. Oh, oh yeah. All right. All right. Well <laughs> done. This isn't going to be huge damage, sadly, but... Well spent hero point. What's the deadly again? Uh, the deadly is an extra D10, I believe. Extra D10, and you did how much damage? So I did 11 damage to it. As that arrow flies through the air, it sails true and it completely pierces through the drudge's body. And when it does, it just falls and kind of blurbles into this puddle of alchemical goop. Thank God for deadly. (laughs) I think I have, what, like 40 HP? Yeah, like 40 HP. What a joke. This is the monster? 
at that moment, it had one HP left when that critical hit went. <laughs> Did we have this conversation last time? Like, I only crit things when it's already basically dead. <laughs> I swear um, this was like two weeks ago or something like that, or last week. As the drudge melts down and that alchemical gloop starts just seeping into the earth, everybody has kind of screamed and run away at this point, and you see the silvery ring sticking up on the ground from where it was at. Congratulations, y'all. You Born. just saved Plague Stone! Born Finally. picks it up and puts it in the Plague Stone. <laughs> <laughs> What's this do? I wonder what this thing I'm, was trying I'm to do. I'm kind of tempted. Like, I want to know what it was going to do. Like, We didn't figure out what, it, what actually was going to happen. You did not. Let's go find out. <laughs> <laughs> so here, I want to say something here really quick. This is to people at home. When we finish an adventure or an adventure path, this group, we've been playing with each other for years. When we beat the big bad end boss, uh, we're just like, yay, pat on the back. Now let's start talking about our next characters, right? So having this end of epilogue is something that we don't typically do, but we're going to do it for you guys just to kind of let you know, you know, where our characters are going after this and what they do with this they've got a ring which they know is a catalyst to something it was supposed to what touch the plague stone and then what you don't know also you think that you have enough evidence to basically say that yeah we've take we took care of whoever murdered bort it'd be pretty simple you think to convince temley to move forward and pick the caravan up and keep going to almas Well, I, I think that's what we do. Um, but first, I would tell Temley, we're going to need you to wait at least a week. Because i got to procure a wagon, and I've got to go travel to all these different places that we fucking left loot. We're picking it all up, and that shit is getting sold. We're, she looks finding, at you. That, we're finding that stump. <laughs> we're finding that fucking stump. Find that fucking stump. She looks at you, and she kind of, sort of like caresses her chin a little bit with her hands. Mm -hmm. I'd be more than happy to provide one of those wagons for you for a very small cut. Two percent. Um, percentages seem a little extravagant at this time. Um, I could just go buy one from one of these podunk people here in the village for much cheaper than that, I'd think. Hmm. You're probably right about that. Yeah, don't try and mess with me, Temley. Thanks he, for the rings, by the he's way. He's got his haggle ring on. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I do have my haggle ring on. This is picture Plum just holding up his fingers and just kind of waggling it. Yeah, yeah, got this from you. You know what this does. Uh, she kind of rolls her eyes at you and goes, fine, we'll wait a week. You've done so much for us at this point. Uh, I just must say I thank you for r truly um, doing Bort justice. Say so we avenge Bort's death. She's like, for a fee, I can help you. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I have to, I'm taking over the caravan here. I'm still trying to get my feet on it. I thought I'd give it a try. It was honestly, I can't fault you for that, Semley. It was well tried, well done. I'd have done the same thing in your place. Well, much appreciated, Plum. Uh, just you come let us know once you are ready. And uh, how about this? I'll let you use one of the wagons free of charge. Aw, oh, thanks there, friend. Yeah, yeah. Can't blame a girl for trying, but yeah, go right ahead. Can't at all. And that's what what that's at least what I do. I gotta finish my damn pilgrimage. I feel like <laughs> wait pilgrimage. I, I, that's, what I was on, that's what I'm on this mission for. I'm on a pilgrimage. <laughs> Going and I got Almas. stopped in this stupid fucking town. <laughs> um, I think Varnak would take the ring and go find um, Noala. 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 It's Noala. God, it's been a long time. But yeah, um, I think I would. I would make the case that I would take the ring and go find Noala and pretty much live out our lives as continuing to guard Plagstone. And I think it's safer. As Varnak, do you really call it Plagstone? <laughs> well, Etrin's fault. <laughs> Way to get the character there. <laughs> well, let's see. Uh, who's going to go with uh, Plum to go procure the loot? Vorn will go. Yay, Vorn! So, who's, who's with me in going out and getting a ship? I know Vorn is. Thank you, Vorn. Varnak, Daru, we'll need ready to, to go be. I gotta make some stops. I already stops. told you what Arnak was doing. So. Yeah. I agree to be your strong man if. Yeah. Stops. You can be my bosun. We gotta stop at some churches along the way. Like like dark churches? Are you going to the other side or? Like oh yeah. Yeah. 
Hell yeah. yeah I gotta burn down some churches. <laughs> I mean, no. <laughs> gotta finish my pilgrimage. After all, all right. Desna did for you in this adventure. All right. No. We'll, we'll let you go visit some churches and, and pay homage and do your pilgrimage, Daru. So, you know, uh, Plum, it wouldn't take you terribly long to find the stump. In fact, if you go visit how it's hot out again, it's on a little sheet of paper that you guys missed. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah we just go over the papers again. Yep, just a little map that leads to the stump. You know exactly where to find it. You can fit everything that you've come Perfect. across in your adventures in a single wagon. And uh, Temley has donated that wagon to your cause. Excellent. We do that. We gather it all up, and I feel rich until I go find out how much a ship costs. A week later, in the feed mill, just as the caravan's about to leave the next morning, Delma, who has spent all week prodding Daru and Varnak for the details, she is just excited that it's all finally to a rest. Oh, so happy, Varnak, that you've finally taken care of this. Oh, it was so good to hear about your adventures. Ah, I'm so happy. Drinks all on the house, all of your tabs, wiped off the record. This is all on me. Oh, Thank you, yeah. Delma. You're the best, Delma. You're welcome, Plum. It's been an absolute <laughs> pleasure. And Roxy, where's Roxy? Oh, I kind of forgot about Roxy. Oh, she's right here, just right on my shoulder. <laughs> oh, she goes and she kind of like gives Roxy a little, uh, you know, a little tickle behind the little bird ear. Delma gives drinks on the house for you guys. She takes care of the rooms. Uh, everybody in town is just ecstatic that this whole thing is done and behind them. Delma's just excited to hear about the experiences. Amora is just relieved that she can prove to the rest of town once and for all, no more gossip, it was not her cooking that killed Bort. <laughs> she was really fucking concerned about that. Uh, she gives everybody an extra helping of game, the game hens that she served that night, because that first night you guys were here, you were talking about how oh, the game hens were great, but the turnips weren't that great. So she doesn't put much turnips on your guys' plate, except for Vorn, and doubles the game hen portion. I feel like she'd want to I'm give out favorite. a lot of that pudding, like the bread pudding or whatever it was that fucking Bort fucking loved and that was poisoned that killed him. And she gives oh, everybody yeah, yeah. a ton of that and is like, see, this shit wasn't poisoned. It's I, fine, guys. I forgot Bort died because you guys left me unconscious on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> you were uh, responsible for that yourself. Well, yeah, I mean, that's true. he got there of his own volition, but you didn't exactly fucking help him get up either. So the night passes, everybody has a merry, good evening, and first thing in the morning, when Daru and Vorn and Plum are all packing up their stuff, they're throwing all the belongings into the wagon that has all of the alchemical items, the supplies, the reagents, everything that they plan on selling for the Miklik, and Varnak, you're there to see them off. I would say that once we get there and this all starts going down I would ask Temley and, and maybe some other members of this caravan crew if they'd like to join us on a ship are you ready to get off the land barge and onto the sea barge I'm telling you it's a lot better Temley cocks an eyebrow at you and she goes this is a serious business proposition oh you betcha Temley I'm one for the adventure but not much one for the managing that's your job, your business, you're good at it if I put up the supplies and we sold the the caravan and some of its contents to put towards the ship half stake in on the ship and all of its profits I'll manage the ship and you do everything else perfect I love it Stemley we've got a Shake. deal you're, you're gonna give one person 50% and the other three of you are gonna take the other 50% I mean if she's taken up like honestly so if you read about it that is how a lot of ships worked the ship had an owner because most sailors weren't a, a, a wealthy enough to be able to afford a ship so the ship would have an owner, and then they'd hire like a captain and a crew to take to, to do the, the shipping business. So that works for me, Emily. You've got yourself a deal. She sticks her hand out, and you guys shake on it. And she this big toothy smile splits her face, and she's excited. I didn't realize that losing such a close friend would end up opening a door for such opportunity. Thank you, Plum. <laughs> I've made good friends here too, Temley. 
<laughs> good Vorn and good Daru and even Varnak. Don't oh, cry, club. Can we put like vitamin C's graduation in the back? Club, <laughs> 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 we still have a long drive. Don't make me cry either. <laughs> Temley goes to get the caravan ready for moving out. Noala's can't. Noala's come to see you all the way, and she comes forward and thanks to everybody for assisting Varnak in taking care of the blight and the corruption in the forest. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> she looks surprised for a second, and then, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Don't mind him. Nod. He was drunk the whole time he head. saw you. He looks much more sober than he was when I first saw him. At this point, he's probably not. <laughs> Actually, it's a good point. We're back in town. The Vorn's fucking hammered. That's a good point. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> at, at some point, he would have gone and grabbed that uh, bearskin cloak that he was working on yeah, oh, a long time cloak. ago. I'm definitely wearing that at this point. I love oh, you've it. had a week to work on it, too. It was, it was for Miklik and, uh, yeah. Oh. Uh, now I'm just picturing Vorn just, like, sitting over the, the abandoned tannery, just, like, scraping fat and rendering this bear's gonna just crying. Oh, big leg. <laughs> wow, turn it. What was it? Turn it like vodka? There's some something. I can't remember. Yeah, the, uh, the really the powerful turn up stuff. He's got about all that while he's doing it. The distilled. Well, it's time to say goodbye. Hey, welcome to the end of the Fall of Plague Stone adventure, guys. I really appreciate you joining us for this one. Thanks, everybody. Like crashes and we're You're all awesome. Dead. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be uh, obviously the end of the Pl Fall of Plague Stone adventure. Uh, we are ridiculously excited as a group to start the Extinction Curse adventure path. Uh, as of recording right now, it's the beginning of January, and Extinction Curse does not release until the end of January. Whether or not the recordings we have will last through there. It's not likely that that's going to occur. So we do have the all on the table format that we're going to be using to kind of fill in the gaps with um, and expect a release for Extinction Curse in early February. Thanks for joining us, guys. It's your turn. <laughs>